Now this will further partic participate in reaction as we had in case of acyl chloride and ester. So further this is going to react with one equivalent of Grignard reagent. This Grignard reagent is again going to attack this carbonyl carbon forming again a 3 degree alkoxide ion and when we give H plus this gets neutralized and we get a 3 degree alcohol. So the reaction is same as we had in case of acyl chloride and ester same will be the reaction for acid derivative. In acyl chloride we have chlorine as a living group in ester we had OET, uh, OET or OR in general as the living group and in case of acid derivative we'll have this carboxylate ion as the living group and all three of them will consume two equivalent of Grignard reagent and they, when, when they consume the first equivalent they form ketone in all three cases and they consume the second equivalent and the reaction stops at the stage of alcohol so the final product of all three acid derivatives except amides will be a alcohol so these are the reaction with acid derivatives conceptually you must know the reactivity order out of the three acid derivatives that will result in the formation of alcohol the most reactive will be acyl chloride because in acyl chloride you have two groups oxygen and chlorine both pulling up the electron creating more deficiency in carbon that would be followed by acid derivative that means acid anhydride in acid anhydride rather you have a supply of electron from this oxygen into the orbital of this carbon so it will be much less reactive than acyl chloride and this is followed by esters in esters again you have a strong plus M effect of this oxygen for this carbonyl group ester will be less reactive because the complete electronic wave of this oxygen will go into the orbital of one carbon here this is shared between these two carbon so the amount be getting supplied to one carbon will be lesser so deficiency fulfilled the deficiency of electron fulfilled to one of the carbon will be lesser so this will be more reactive so this will be the reactivity order now they can ask you in problem this concept as we'll see now Now suppose I have the substrate, I have three groups attached to the benzene ring, I have a carboxylic acid group, I have an aldehyde group and I have a acyl chloride group. Now the various things can be asked out of this. Now suppose one of the possible question is if I add one equivalent of Grignard reagent, that means for each of one molecule of the substrate, I have only one molecule of Grignard reagent, then where, what is, what will be the site of attack of Grignard reagent, where the Grignard reagent will show reaction. Now as such this benzene ring will be inert to reaction because benzene ring is having electronic wave this is electron rich Grignard reagent is also electron rich there's no reaction of this benzene ring with Grignard reagent now these three are the functional groups which probably will react this is an acid this is an aldehyde this is an acyl chloride now we have to identify the site where the reaction of the first equivalent will take place now as we already know and as we have been already discussed that the acid base reaction is the fastest reaction if there's a, there's a reaction at this acid there will be acid base reaction because of presence of this active hydrogen this hydrogen is active hydrogen because this hydrogen is attached with oxygen which is an electronegative atom if there's attack here that will be a nucleophilic attack if there's attack here that will be a nucleophilic attack and nucleophilic attack are slow acid base reactions are fast so based upon reactivity and kinetics of the reaction the first equivalent of Grignard reagent will react with this acid So that can be one way of asking the problem the next problem that can be asked is if there are supply of many Grignard reagent molecule per molecule of the substrate how many molecules of Grignard reagent are going to be consumed by the substrate 
now for this uh, let's let's go on looking at the chronology of the sites where the reaction will proceed the first equivalent will be consumed here this is an acid this hydrogen will be abstracted by the first equivalent so this group is going to consume one molecule of Grignard reagent or one equivalent of Grignard reagent next we'll have this aldehyde and we'll have this acyl chloride The next functional group uh, that can react is this aldehyde and this acyl chloride. Now you have to look for the reactivity as we have already seen that this hydrogen, instead of this hydrogen we are having a chlorine here. This chlorine will be abstracting electron from the sigma bond and this hydrogen will not abstract any electron because the electronegativity value of carbon and hydrogen are quite close. So the next equivalent of Grignard reagent is going to attack this site because this site is more electron deficient than this carbon so but then when it reacts and quickly it forms a ketone when it forms a ketone the reaction will not stop at this stage at that stage because ketones are also reactive towards Grignard reagent and the reaction finally will stop at the stage of alcohol so this acyl chloride is going to consume two equivalent of Grignard reagent and this aldehyde will consume one equivalent of Grignard reagent because there is no attached leaving group as we have in case of acyl chloride that the C double bond will, will be reformed after breaking for the first time. So we have already seen these reactions. So this side is going to consume one equivalent, one equivalent and this side is going to consume two equivalent. So the whole substrate is going to consume four equivalent of Grignard reagent. So basically you just have to keep in mind probably they'll ask you which, which will be the first site of attack which will be the second site of attack so you know must know the reactivity or order and the reactivity order is acid base reaction is the fastest this you have to know so wherever you have active hydrogen reaction will take place first there then you must know carbonyl compounds are more reactive than acid derivatives except acyl chloride because in acyl chloride you have a chlorine pulling the electron in a carbonyl compounds you have hydrogen that is that, that will not do anything or in case if you have R as in ketone the R group will have a weak inductive effect that will try to supply some amount of electron to fulfill the deficiency of electron then comes the reactivity of acid anhydrides and then comes the least reactive esters we have seen this order now if you have you have to keep this order and binded in your memory for hereafter Now we move on to the next reaction of Grignard reagent after looking at the reaction of carbonyl compounds, after looking at the reaction of acid derivatives and after looking at the reaction of active hydrogen. Now we move on to the reaction of Grignard reagent with general alkyl halide. Now suppose if we have any alkyl halide and I add Grignard reagent to this. Now if I add a Grignard reagent, again we understand the problem of Grignard reagent. Grignard reagent has a negative charge on R. And the negative charge is very very unstable on Grignard reagent because carbon being a small atom and least electronegative atom that is capable by no way of holding that negative charge and somehow we have to find a way out to dump that negative charge. And there's a, there are two ways of dumping that negative charge. Either you form a bond with a hydrogen or any other electron deficient atom or you go and put your electron into the empty bonding or anti-bonding orbital. These are only two way out. Now in a case of alkyl halide, since hydrogen is not attached with any other electronegative atom, so there is no active hydrogen present for reaction. I mean if, if you open up this R, suppose for understanding the situation better, I, I instead of R I put a ethyl group. Suppose you have haloethane. Then if you put, uh, if you abstract any of the hydrogen from this part, again the negative charge is going to come on carbon so th that's going to solve no purpose so that's why whenever hydrogen is not attached with electronegative atoms reaction do not take place so the only other way out is to put that negative charge into the empty orbital or anti-bonding orbital of s any other atom now here we don't have bonding orbitals empty so in this kind of situation what have to happen is 
you must put the electron into the anti-bonding orbital because Grignard reagent can't hold that negative charge for too long. So and the only way out is putting that negative charge into the empty orbital of R. Now as we have seen the situation before, this R is bonded with X by an overlapping of bonding orbitals. So you have electrons in here in bonding orbitals and opposite to this bonding orbital there is an anti-bonding orbital and we have already seen and we already know that this anti-bonding orbital is generally empty. It is fulfilled only during the reactions. So what will happen is this R- is going to put its electron into the anti-bonding and we already know the rule that the bonding and anti-bonding orbital together must hold at max of two electrons and there are two electrons in this bond that two electrons resides in both the orbitals so if, if we have to find out the number of electrons in this bonding orbital that is two two in here two in here so if somehow the electronic density in anti-bonding is going to increase then we must have a mechanism to empty up the electronic density from bonding orbital because anti-bonding and bonding together can hold maximum of two electrons so if we are putting up the electron here then the from bonding orbital electron must get emptied into X when this happens the negative charge of X R minus will get mitigated will get decreased and the negative charge of this X minus will be increased and that will stabilize our system because the negative charge on R is less stable the negative charge on X is more stable so when this process will be completed when this whole electronic transition will take place from R minus to anti bonding of R and from this bonding into the bonding of X then a complete bond from backside of this R dash and R will be formed and this bond will be completely broken and X will move out as X minus negative charge will get transferred from R to X and this will bring about stability in the system So this is simple nucleophilic substitution of a hard nucleophile that is R minus and a soft nucleophile X minus has been removed so X minus has been substituted by R minus in the substrate so this is simple nucleophilic substitution this occurs when you don't have any other option of a nucleophilic attack as you have in case of carbonyl compounds and neither do you have a scope of acid base reaction when you don't have a acid scope of acid base reaction you always have a nucleophilic attack on an electron deficient carbon as you have in case of carbonyl compounds like in carbonyl compound you have electron deficient atom or in case you don't have electron deficient atom in case of alkyl halide then that electron moves into the anti-bonding of Rx now conceptually you must understand that the negative charge has to go and we have to find means and ways for that negative charge to vanish one of the ways to form bond with S plus that is an acid base reaction that is fast because it, the bond with hydrogen is weak so we give priority to acid base reaction over other reactions the next is these electronic transitions now these electronic transitions are slow because slowly slowly these electrons will move into the anti-bonding and gradually this bonding orbital will move into the orbital of bonding electrons will move into the orbital of this X so this will be taking some time this will be a gradual process this will be not as fast as abstracting H plus from any electronegative atom so this is slower than acid based reaction nevertheless if we are reacting alkyl halide with a Grignard reagent you are going to get an alkane